All right. Well, I guess I'll start. Uh, I'll start chatting. We've got a couple people. Uh, a couple people showing up. We got some. A uh, little bit of Undertale music in the background. And tell me, like as always, let me know if the the audio uh, is kind of obnoxiously loud, or if it's uh, if it's unbalanced. I think I got it about right. I I guessed. I did my usual guessing game and I feel I feel like I nailed it because I think I'm awesome so yeah uh, that's definitely definitely where where I consider myself to be so hello Noel hello hello moat man uh, Merry Christmas happy holidays uh, whatever whatever holidays you may or may not observe um, thanks for uh, thanks for stopping by. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit now. This, this, here's a, here's a way that I'll I'll cover a little bit of time here, as as a couple people sort of roll in and just explain a little bit of what what I'm doing here, why I'm doing this, because it's like why why on Christmas Eve, why Dan, why on Christmas Eve would you choose to stream Undertale rather than spend time with with friends and family because I, I certainly do do have that option I could be uh, I could be at though most of my family is out of town I've got some some friends I could stay with but I thought I thought I would do this because it it's important to me from my childhood and let me explain why why I say that what what is important to uh, what about it is important to me from my childhood well growing up my dad was in radio he he was on air sometimes he uh, was so so every but he he worked a lot in in like the managerial side but he was also on air like when I was a really little kid he was on air and also like even in the managerial side sometimes on holidays he would have to fill in and uh, so usually about every two or three years dad would end up working on New Year's Eve or Christmas Eve or New Year's Day or you know, so there would be these times where he wasn't around because he would be at the station doing the on-air stuff for uh, for that time. And so we would, on those years, we would listen to the radio as we were doing our Christmas Eve stuff because then, you know, that there's Dad. There's Dad on the radio. And so it, it became meaningful to me the connection that you could have with people over uh, over a broadcast that you didn't necessarily like that, that that was a way of connecting with people and so even on the years where we didn't where dad was with us we would still often have the radio station that he was working at we would have it playing uh, around the house so that we you know would have a little bit of that connection to to the DJ that that in in some way by listening to them they weren't then alone at the station even though they were like they were physically alone at the station and they didn't have you know a chat room that they could back and forth with but they would try and establish you know rapport with the uh, with the listeners and and it struck me that there was a way of having some human connection through the intangibility of of broadcast and so I I thought that now with with new media with changing media here we are on New Year's Eve and I would follow a little bit in in my dad's footsteps and and broadcast for all those who who are sitting at home who maybe don't have anywhere to go who maybe just are are being themselves and just uh, enjoying themselves staying in it's not that they don't have anywhere to go it's that they are where they want to be um, but you know giving uh, it's it's a chance to uh, to connect with people it's a chance to to keep you company and have you keep me company and I thought what better way what an absolutely better way of celebrating that or or of engaging with that than a pacifism run in Undertale I thought that was quite quite thematically wonderful way of doing it so we we are here to be a friend to monsters and dogs uh, and and yeah so thank you all for uh, thank you all for coming out and I hope uh, I hope you enjoy and we'll we'll keep each other company and it will be good and we will have a happy holidays so 
I actually started the game a couple days ago. I actually, I hadn't, I have not played this all the way through before. I just picked it up with the Steam sale earlier this week, and I started it a couple days ago, but then uh, in order to do the broadcast, I needed to switch over to a different partition, which didn't bring my save game with me. So we'll actually be starting all the way over from the beginning. And hello, suddenly senpai, senpai, uh, welcome, welcome to the stream. And here we are. So we'll be starting over from the beginning, and this will be a full uh, pacifism run. I will probably die uh, more than once because I am bad at video games. It turns out. I have learned that streaming that I am, I am bad at video games, and I should probably give up. But I won't. I won't give up. And you know what? Let's let's go. Who? Who should we are going to be Santa? We're going to be Santa. That's who we're going to be. We are Santa. Because that is only appropriate. All told. Is this name correct? Yes. Yes, we are Santa. So I have played through the first two hours or so, um, but but past that, uh, past that, it's all new to me. So I already know about I already know about this jerk. This is such a... Oh, oh, this tutorial is so good. It's so good. It's, it's heartbreaking. Oh. Even though I just went through it a couple days ago, it's still, it's still just like, I still feel betrayed. I know it's coming, but I still feel betrayed. Oh. Hello, Toriel. I wanted to use a gamepad, actually, but... things actually going into it so I've I haven't actually had most of the game spoiled for me in fact what I kind of consider to be the spoilers I had been exposed to um, it turns out they're not so the whole element of uh, of being able to talk to things and the whole idea of a pacifism run I was uh, I was initially assuming that like oh okay well that's you know the importance of it um, was something that I thought was, uh, you know, possibly spoilery, but then you get into it and it's like, no, it, it basically lays that all out, like, right away. Um... You know, so so I was afraid of that that maybe I'd had that element spoiled or the, the significance of that spoiled, but... 
I hadn't. You know, Toriel starts off right away just being like, okay, here's, uh, here's the deal. You might want to do this. And, uh, and they really push, uh, they, they do push that, or they, they press the, the possibility of it and the significance of it more or less right away and lay it all out. So, I, I don't know how much I know anymore. That's all been cast into, cast into doubt. Uh, also, I realized, <laughs> just like yesterday, that uh, other things that I thought might be, it's like kind of spoilery, or actually just back of the box stuff, like it's right there in the Steam description, which I've actually never read. Um, so I probably know virtually nothing about this game relative to people who, who have actually been properly paying attention, people who have been, uh, certainly people who have played it know far, far more than me, and I think that gets people excited. And I'm excited too, I, I really like, I like the impact that it's had on me so far, I like the mechanics, I enjoy that the, uh, I did not leave you, I was merely behind this pillar the whole time, tutorial. Um, I really like where they went with the pacifism mechanics and how it's it's not just a one note thing that they have turned like that they have made it a suitable uh, suitable challenge and that there's actually a lot of really interesting mini uh, mini puzzles in order to in order to progress. My my favorite so far has been, uh, it's about an hour in, it's these two dogs with, uh, with giant cleavers, giant axes, two dogs with giant axes, and you have to roll on the ground in order to disguise your scent as a dog, and then you pet them, and their doggy minds, their, their minds are blown because they had never before considered that a dog could pet another dog. And it's, oh, it was so good. It's, it's some great kind of uh, throwback to the um, really sort of like the moon logic of old uh, of old, uh, uh, what am I trying to say, um, adventure games, like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and whatnot. You know, it's, it has that kind of s sensibility to it in a lot of, uh, in a lot of great ways. You know, what do you do? You, you compliment the frog, but it doesn't understand, but still... So, uh, cinnamon or butterscotch? Which, which do we prefer, cinnamon or butterscotch? Cinnamon or butterscotch? I went with butter, I'm gonna go with butterscotch. I like butterscotch. I know, yeah. Butterscotch. Oh, I see. <laughs> you do not dislike cinnamon, do you? I know what your preference is, but would you turn up your nose at you? Right, right, I understand. Thank you. And oh, I just caught that. I just caught that. All oh, right, all right, right. You don't. Sorry. Uh, I just caught that. Okay, so the sign says three out of four. Three out of four gray rocks recommend you push them, and then the fourth gray rock that you come across, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see if I can nail this. 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've got a great memory. Apparently. Apparently I have a good enough memory. So, one rock, and now we've got three rocks, so that makes four rocks total. Uh, a frog in a whimsom. Whimsom won't even try, so I can just compliment froggy. Frog it. Ah! No! So, three, and the fourth rock. Three out of four rocks recommend you push them, and the fourth you need to convince. You don't, you don't actually, you convince it to move. Like, that's just, oh, that's, it's very, it's so subtle, and it's just wonderful. The ghost. Sorry, ghost. Spiders. I can't buy anything from the spider bake sale. Unless this looks. There we go. Now I've got enough. Spider donut. Check looks and then say his full name out. Okay. Uh. Check looks and say his full name out loud. All right. Hello, hello, Toriel. Uh, 
What is it? Is it this one with the carrot? Yes. This one took me a while to... Ah, missed it. Eat my greens. Alright, where's... Got it. Ah, no. Ah. Oh, you're all talking about... About deep spoilers, it seems. Mm -hmm. Alright. Eat my greens. I... I know last time I was playing, uh... Wait. Did I not hit the switch? Did I did I forget to hit the switch? Did I go through all that and then forget to hit the switch? I did. This puzzle I thought was great. I'm gonna kind of blow through a bunch of these just cause, you know... I already figured them out, I already did them a couple days ago. And I don't think, I don't think you'll all mind too much. It is apparently a fairly long game, so... Um... Oh. It's only like five to seven hours? Okay, I thought it was, uh, I thought it was a little bit longer, like, closer to 14, but that might have been people, um, who, like, really... really dug into it. Press the green switch. Like I said, I'm not always the best. The bullet hell, the bullet hell aspect is actually, I'm not very good at it. Uh, nope. Dang it. And, yeah, red is closest to the, yeah, red is closest. That's okay. That's all right. Oh wait, did it say red? It said red, right? Press the green switch. Pick up. I walker. Looks I walker. Okay, yeah. Please don't pick on me. Ah, ah, oh god, ah, ah, ah. Uh. Three or four. 
four playthroughs to see all the content. Good to know. There we go. Hello, Toriel. I love Toriel's voice. It's just, it's kind of perfect for something that's so low res. Cinnamon pie. And then they don't interest you at all. as our king is. He's pretty lousy at names. chocolate bar in case I need to heal later because I'm bad and terrible. This is heartbreaking. I know what happens, but still, I'm going to destroy it. Puke a child and go upstairs, and you assert yourself. No. I totally get where you're coming from, Toriel. I understand, but I can't. 